Hello there. What's going on everybody? I'm bringing you today the top 10 Brobnar cards for Keyforge. This is still an early list, it's preliminary, and it's primarily based on my opinions, so if you disagree, you're more than welcome to. Uh, this list will probably adjust and change a little bit as time goes by, as we become more familiar with the game, and as we learn more of the intricacies and the combos. I think certain cards may rise higher, and certain car cards that we initially value more may you know may adjust a little bit. So this is you know this is a living list. It's not locked in. Uh, however, of course, the video won't change, but new videos will come out over time. Speaking of new videos, I invite you to subscribe as well as click that bell for alerts because I have huge giveaways going on all the time. I got a really, really big one right now for a Superstar Destroyer for Star Wars Armada. If you'd like to enter to win that, all you have to do is click down there and uh, hit the subscribe. You want to also leave a comment and uh, you can do that on any one of my videos. You're automatically entered to win. That will be on December 21st, so stay tuned for that. That's going to be awesome. And we're going to be talking about the top 10 Brobnar cards for Keyforge right now. Now, this is a little bit more about this list. It's kind of when I'm opening a Brobnar deck, what am I looking for? What are things that I look for? Obviously, there's going to be certain cards that are more powerful in certain decks, especially with certain synergies. But I'm looking for things that are more universal or things that have general synergy with Brobnar as a faction, as, as a whole. Uh, so th those are things that factor into the decision. Um, and as well as my own bias, there's certain things I think are cool. Before I do the top 10 though, this one's going to be a little different because I'm actually going to bring up two special cases that are not in the top 10 but that I did want to talk about just a little bit. The first one is Mighty Javelin. This one, while it doesn't seem that great on the surface, I want to put a special caveat in this one because I feel like this one could be, depending on the future, depending on how you know decks end up getting, once chains come out, once every deck is chained, once certain decks you know become more popular in different uh, tournament formats. This one has the potential to be really strong, specifically because, you know, look at cards like Restringuntas, right, that might say you can't do a certain house. There are certain combos out there that can, you know, lock you into doing a certain house or, or you know, a, a, like a Restringuntas. I actually got my first Restringuntas the other day. And, he, and if you're not familiar, he's a disc creature that when while he's in play, you name a house and the opponent can never use that house. Um, and so if, for example, you had a handful of Brobnar cards and your opponent played a Restringuntus and said you can't use Brobnar, you're done. Game over. right? Unless you have a way to kill that Restringuntus. And if you can't use any of the cards in your hand or discard any of the cards in your hand, how are you going to do that, right? And so, so Omni abilities uh, you know, work outside of their house, so like cards with Omni are already kind of cool because you can use them outside of your normal house, but but in this way, it's like it's a way to deal with problem creatures that might you know have you. And and, and I don't think Restoring Guntus is the only use for Mighty Javelin, but also future proofing as other sets come out. If that type of theme of locking you out of a house becomes more of a thing, a card like this gives you like a way out from any situation. So I think you know Mighty Javelin is a really cool card, and I did want to bring that up because I could see that in the future making a list. Um, another one that didn't make the list that I just had to bring up is like maybe one of the coolest cards in this entire game, Yo Mama Mastery. Yo Mama Mastery is like one of the coolest upgrades I've ever seen. And the art on it, everything about this card is just so much fun. And I, I think in some cases, and I th I'll probably do this going forward if I do any more lists in the future, is I'm going to reserve the right to include super, super fun cards, even if they're maybe not top 10 worthy. Uh, and this card isn't bad, I just don't think it's top 10 worthy, um, at least in the faction. Like, there are certain builds where this would easily be a top 10 quality card, but universally, uh, this isn't always a great card. It's sometimes a really great card, especially maybe you have your own Restringuntus, and you want to give the creature next to it taunt so somebody can't, you know, something like that. Um, there's uses for it, but I mean, look at the the the, the, the art. They got the, the hammer on the shoulder, and it's just he's talking trash to all these ogres and stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, so now we're going to start with our top ten. And speaking of fun factor, I think I did use a little bias on number ten. Um, it's the Khalifi Dragon. So... A couple of things about this. I don't know if Khalifi meant to draw some inspiration from Game of Thrones, the Khaleesi, Mother of Dragons, 
I don't know if that was something that inspired the naming scheme here, but I love it. I love this dragon's wings of rockets. Are you kidding me? It's got rocket wings. Are you kidding me? So I know the art isn't something that really brings something into the top 10, but I have to mention how awesome is that artwork? Amazing. So on to the actual creature itself. Uh, it's uh, It's got 12 power. Amazing. Like, like the strong, I think this is the strongest creature in the game as it, you know, all things considered. Other creatures can situationally be stronger, but I think, you know, as far as printed value, then I think this is the strongest creature in the game. Khalifi Dragon cannot be played unless you have seven or more, though, so it's got a condition, and it's not that hard to get seven, uh, especially with as many things as are out there for your opponent to deny you the use of Amber, but when once you get this dragon out there, it's going to be really hard to kill with 12 power. There is things to deal with it, but if they don't, if they're not able to deal with it, you can fight or reap, you're going to gain one and deal five to a creature. So you don't even need to attack. This is a creature you can just sit there and be like, yes, I'm power 12. I'm gonna sit here and just reap. And I'm also gonna be shooting my rockets at your guys. So I don't even have to attack. Oh, if, oh, did you bring out a nine power creature? All right, now I'll come over and attack. I'm also gonna gain one while I do that. And I'm also gonna deal five damage to another creature. So really, really strong, incredibly strong power. Like, like if you can get this out there too, that's also just a little panache. If you get this out there and be like, yeah, I got a dragon, what's up? I think it's amazing. Um, yeah, harder to play though, and maybe, I can see a disagreement here, maybe this you don't think because of the condition of seven or more amber, um, and also maybe the condition that if he's the only one out there, if he reaps, technically he has to do five damage to himself, because if he's the only creature, right? So I can see those things maybe not making him top 10 worthy, but come on, it's a dragon with 12 health and rocket wings. It's, I think, so I'm, I'm taking some, some bias privilege to, to put him on the list because I think he's awesome. He or she, I don't know if he's, I don't know the gender of the dragon. It could be multiple dragons. And there are a family of dragons, boys and girls and, and other dragon um, identities that I'm not aware of that I cannot pronounce with my mortal tongue. Let's go on to number nine. Number nine, the Iron Obelisk. Uh, there is not a whole lot of, uh, you know, Brobnar isn't known specifically for, for dealing with a whole lot of stopping people from forging keys and, and stealing amber. It's not really their forte. Their forte is bringing out lots of creatures, killing your creatures, and then once all your creatures are dead, well, then we can go ahead and reap, and that's how, you know, Brobnar wants to win the game. So this is an, actually a really nice way to mess with your opponent. Uh, it, it, especially in a faction that doesn't have a whole lot. But additionally, uh, it just has natural synergy with Brobnar. Brobnar's decks tend to have more creatures, uh, at least from my experience. And again, this is one of the reasons I say this is going to change over time. We may come to find out that, you know, Brobnar has the exact same chance to have, you know, creatures. But Brobnar creatures also, when they're out, they're usually stronger. Most Brobnar creatures are like power five or more. You know, so you're more likely to have Brobnar creatures stay on the board, uh, whereas other factions, their one power creatures are more likely to get wiped out. Uh, and so, because you're more likely to have Brobnar creatures on the board, because of their tremendous power, they're more likely to be able to attack and then stay alive, and thus be damaged. So this just has natural synergy. You're probably going to have a couple of Brobnar creatures with damage on them, and thus... You can, you know, you can make this really work, and it can end up making your opponent have to spend an awful lot more amber to forge keys. And the cool thing about that is, it's like it's not a one-time thing; it stays out there. They're just going to continue to cost more uh, for as long as you have damaged creatures out. So I, I think it's there's a lot of potential there. That's Iron Obelisk number nine, number eight, Anger. Uh, anger it lets you ready and fight with a friendly creature. This can be out of house, so that is automatically good. Being able to fight, and, and Brobnar does a decent amount of this, but I like this one. And there's other effects out there that can let you fight with other creatures uh, that let you activate outside of house. There are several of them within Brobnar. I chose this one for the top 10 because it has some extra synergy. I think it's a little more flexible, and I like this one a little bit better, even though some of the other cards do this better. I'll tell you why. Um, like there's ones that says you can fight within it's like choose a house you can fight with everybody from that house and everything like that That's great. The problem is you don't always have that many creatures outside of Brobnar and a lot of my decks 
with Brobnar, Brobnar is the most creature heavy faction, so I don't really need that many outside of Brobnar. I don't need that much out of house Brobnar stuff. Again, this is something that may change, but what I like about Anger and what made this one get the spot on the list is that it has an Amber, so that's already a plus. Um, but you got, you're running and, and fighting with a friendly creature, and, and specifically, you can use this, obviously you can use this out of house, but I'm looking at the synergies of using it within house, because now, um, if I want to reap and fight, I can do that, because now I can take a Brobnar creature, if I'm declaring Brobnar, I can reap with them, and now play Anger, and then ready and fight. Maybe it's a creature that I'm going to be trading off. Maybe it's a creature that's going to die on this fight. Well, I can reap with them first, then play Anger, ready and fight. Or I can have the creature fight twice, the same creature fight twice, which is also going to have natural synergy with a lot of Brognar creatures that you know, you know, you really want them fighting because their fight bonus is great. And so you can make a Brognar creature fight twice. I mean, that works with other, you know, and it's also good for out of house. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at it from like three or four or three point five different ways. The amber makes it good. Out of house makes it good. Um, in in house, the double tap for double fighting, or in house the reap and fight, um, or in any even an action. But I just like it. I like it a lot. As long as you do the other action first, because when you do anger, you ready and fighting. Now another cool thing about this is that if your opponent has no creatures, you could potentially reap twice with a Brobnar creature because you could reap, then play anger ready and fight, oh, you do as much as you can. If you can't fight because there's nobody for it to fight, you still ready it. And then after anger is done, the action goes away, now you can rape with that creature that you just readied. So again, that's only if it's Brognar, because you declared House Brognar. So, but I like, you know, there's, there's a lot of little tricks and a lot of flexibility with this card. It just makes it, I think, universally good in every deck. Whereas some of the other ones that do the out of house stuff might require a little more setup or a little more deck specific stuff. And they can be more powerful, but I think this one's universal enough. I gave it the number eight spot. Number seven, one of the other cards that can really um, mess with your opponent's ability to forge a key. This one is actually pretty darn effective. Uh, if your opponent has seven or more amber, they lose four amber. This one is a real dangerous one, and it's one of those reasons that people are really cautious about how much amber they generally tend to create on their turn. I can see this one as being one that changes over time and becomes less effective as the game matures, because I've started to notice, like in my games, because of cards like this, I will sometimes, maybe I have a bunch of creatures out there, I'm going to reap, 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 and I'll get to six amber, I could reap some more but I specifically don't. So as players get smarter and preparing for, for games a little bit more, um, this one may go down as like if people deliberately stop at six amber. Granted, if they do that, it makes it easier because then you just have to steal one. But, there, but losing four is a really, really big hit to your opponent. And this is a really strong card, especially in Brobnar Faction that doesn't have a whole lot of this. Um, this is a really effective one. So this one, if you get this, it's really good. And I think this is also universally good because just taking four Ambers from somebody, it's tremendous, tremendously strong. Number six, Tremor. Really, really, really strong card here. Uh, I, I love this because it's, it's stunning three creatures for your opponent. It's not one of those stuns that has that chance to turn around and, and hit your own guys. Uh, and stun is just so, so powerful because, you know, it, they have to exhaust to clear the stun. So they have to use an action to clear the stun, and then it exhausts them. So it's really, they're out of, out of commission for a whole turn, and then the following turn, then they can maybe, you know, do that. Especially if you're able to get creatures of multiple different houses too, then you really make it difficult. For, for your opponent to try to uh, unstun them, unstun them all. So, uh, and yeah, the, the fact that you're getting three for, for one is really nice. I like Tremor a lot. I think it's going to be useful in almost every deck. Coward's End is going to be number five. Um, better, <laughs> potentially better than, uh, you know, than Tremor. Destroy each undamaged creature and gain three chains. Now the three chains is it's rough, but we've seen this before. With you know, with this, uh, there's board clearing stuff in in all of these factions, but but this one you have a little bit of control over. Obviously, if your creatures are damaged, you might not want to play this card quite just yet. 
maybe this is, you know, one of those, you know, cards that you just hold on to for the right time. And there's nothing wrong with that. I actually think it's uh, it's a great card because you can hold it until the time is right and use this as a board wipe that only wipes your opponent's creatures if you can set it up appropriately enough. Um, for example, maybe you've got, you know, each of you have four creatures and some of them are damaged. I might take my damaged creatures, finish off your damaged creatures, you know, um, or or maybe I take my undamaged creatures and uh, and you know and finish off or attack your damaged creatures to finish them off. Now all of mine have some damage and yours are now undamaged and I play this wipes out the rest of your creatures. I have damage on all my guys but they're all still alive. So that's certainly you know has the potential to be way better than you know something like gateway to disc which just completely wipes the board. And uh, and the fact is you control this. This one may actually rise in the ranks as people learn how to play it and learn to when when to hold it for maximum effectiveness, this one could be an incredibly effective effective card. Um, and the fact that it's destroying undamaged creatures is really really strong. I think it's easier to play something like this than to destroy damaged creatures, just because there's so many of those creatures that come out with like elusive and they're hard to attack, or you're right next to a taunt creature and you're hard to attack that way. So this one's just gonna just gonna pick those guys straight up and put them in the Put them in the trash can. That's some coward's end. Next up at number four, the Gauntlet of Command. Absolutely love this card. It's again, this is something that Brobnar does. Brobnar has, like I said before, they have multiple abilities to um, to access creatures from outside of their house. But pretty much all of those are the are allowing you to fight with those creatures outside of house. But that's fine. Um, and this one, what I like about this is that it's an artifact, so you can do this every time you call Brobnar. Specifically, this factors into a strategy that I like to see of having a lot of Brobnar creatures out and being able to just call Brobnar every turn. And the hard part about that is you're restricting yourself only to Brobnar, but if you have Gauntlet of Command out, now you can use another creature from outside of Brobnar to attack. You can use your Brobnar creatures to reap if you need to. Uh, and it just lets you call Brobnar over and over again. So it, uh, once you are basically once you get in power, a lot of times you know people are tempted to like, well, I can't, you know, I've got all these creatures out, but I need to call a different house so I can play these cards in my hand and use my other stuff. But like this is allowing you to get in power and stay in power because you can still use that other guy outside a house. You can still you know fight with this other creature. Um, but additionally, it has the the ability to let you also double tap and use your own uh, um, Brobnar creatures uh, more than once. So if they have no creatures out, you can reap and then use this to ready and fight with a Brobnar creature that already reaped. They'll ready them, you can't fight, and then you reap again, you know, you do as much as you can. So Gauntlet of Command, really, really nice, and uh, you know, it's definitely better than Anger for the purpose of that you can use it multiple times. Um, and I like that, you can just keep using it every turn if you want, love it. Number three, the Pingle who annoys. This little guy, he is so annoying. A really good first turn play, I think, also. Um, he's elusive. Now, he's actually, I think, the weakest Brobnar creature I've seen. It's only power of two. Kind of weak, right? But he's elusive, so he's hard to attack. Um, of course, direct, direct damage could take him out. But, boy, he's so hard to kill. Right, with that elusive. He's going to deal one damage to each enemy creature, creature after it enters play. So every, you know, like like here's a guy who's the only faction that's actually doesn't really mind him that much is going to be Sanctum because they have all those knights with armor. <laughs> but he's damaging everything as soon as you bring it in. Damage, 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 damage. Any one power creature instantly dies as soon as they bring it into play. Um, you know, two power creatures, you know, effectively have, you know, one damage on them right away, and so on and so forth. Really nasty, really nasty guy. Uh, and will definitely draw your opponent's uh, removal uh, abilities as early as possible. The Pingle Who Annoys. Number two, speaking of one damage to everybody, here's another one who does it and uh, can potentially do it even better, and that's the Fire Spitter. I absolutely love this creature. There's so much good going on with the Fire Spitter. Fire Spitter is basically, before fight, 
is going to deal one damage to each enemy creature. So, first off, before fight abilities, you don't have to survive the fight to do because those trigger before the fight. So when you say, I'm attacking with Fire Spitter, boom, one damage to everybody. That could, in theory, kill off a lot of folks, and you can do this every turn if you want. Um, the other thing is, Fire Spitter is a power 5 creature, but he's also got one armor. Not a lot of Brobnar creatures have armor, so that much is also really good because he's more likely to survive removal. So he's going to be out there, he's going to be hitting the board over and over again. And I mean, heck, maybe you even attack an elusive creature. Boom, this is before the fight. I just, I, I love the Fire Spitter. I think he's great and he's, a, he's like your opponent is not going to be happy when you bring out a Fire Spitter. Definitely not. Next up, and number one, the Mugwump. Uh, this, this guy, I just love him. He is one of my favorite creatures in the whole game. Uh, as far as fitting in with Brobnar and what he's doing. He's a power six, so he's already one of the stronger creatures. <laughs> but then anytime he kills somebody, he fully heals and gets stronger. He's like he's literally the Incredible Hulk, I think is the way. He gets angry and he he hulks up even more. He's is literally the Incredible Hulk. Um, and he's so hard to kill because you can't damage him. The really the only way like you, you can damage him with spells or actions rather or artifacts. But if a creature attacks him and dies, then he fully heals and gets a plus one counter. The only way a creature is going to be able to take him down is if they have Skirmish. That is basically it. Um, or if you're attacking creatures with Elusive, maybe, I, I, I you know, but um, you wouldn't do that. And though Mugwump is really, really hard to take down, and he can get absurdly huge, and he's also a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. Granted, there are certain cards that just purge a creature or, or get rid of a creature at a certain power or the mass wiping of creatures but but Mugwump is just great and uh, and that is my top 10 for Brobnar I would love to hear what you guys think though what did I get wrong what did you think should be on this list let me know in the comments below um, let me know how much fun you're having with Brobnar as well I want to thank you guys so much for watching uh, look for more Keyforge videos in the future I am absolutely loving this game finally did get a core set so I'll be doing a, a, a full tutorial on how to play Keyforge though I'm guessing a lot of you probably already know that but to think of that as something good for everybody else to bring more people into the game because it is a lot of fun I want to thank you all so much for watching and as always have a great day